Hey everybody, Mark Melnick here from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. Hope you're doing wonderful. You know, one of the greatest places I like to go fishing is in Wind River Country in Wyoming. It is trout paradise, be they browns, rainbows, cutthroat, it is just incredible. Um, I've been fortunate enough to do a couple of TV shows and I'll be, I'd go back in a heartbeat. Jenna McEwen was lucky enough to be in Wind River Country this past season and she had some unbelievable angling for small, in small streams for big trout. So, check it out. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and in this week's episode, I have the pleasure of bringing you along on my adventure to the beautiful state of Wyoming. I am targeting the world famous Yellowstone cutthroat trout. I might even have the chance to get into some rainbows and some brookies. It's going to be a great technical show, so stay with us. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Wind River Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. While I have been blessed to fish some of the most incredible locations across Canada, there has always been one fishing destination in the back of my mind. The American West. With unparalleled topography, wildlife, and fishing. It's no wonder I couldn't wait for this trip of a lifetime. During these uncertain times, it's important to travel responsibly and take all necessary precautions whenever possible. This week, I'm on a fishing adventure in the Wind River region of Wyoming, exploring the small streams and rivers that cut through the towering mountains and expansive valleys. The Wind River region lays home to some truly incredible fishing opportunities. Whether you're a die-hard stream angler, or prefer to explore other bodies of water, such as lakes and reservoirs, this region has it all. For this trip, one of our hosts is Helen Wilson from the Wind River Visitors Council. She set us up with accommodations at Boysen State Park on the Upper Wind River Campground. The Wind River region is home to many similar campsites, perfect for any angler on the road. Once settled into the cabin, I headed to the Lander Fly Shop, located just off 3rd Street in Lander, Wyoming, to meet my guide for the first few days of the trip. Austin Jordan is a knowledgeable guide and passionate angler, and together we came up with a plan for the following day. After a long day of traveling and planning, I settled into my cabin for the night, eager for my first day of adventure in the morning. For our first day of fishing, I drove from the cabin to meet Austin at a small nearby river. This long and winding river stretches down from the mountains and provides anglers the opportunity to target brown, rainbow, and cutthroat trout. So 
So Austin, can you tell me a little bit about where we're fishing, how we're going to fish it? Um, I really don't have a whole lot of stream fishing experience like this, so any pointers you have for me would be awesome. Yeah, we are fishing a small mountain stream in the Absorcas. Okay. Um, it's cold water, small pools, the trout are going to be near the moving water. Definitely at the back of where the water ends is the deeper pockets, and that's where we're hoping our nymph is going to sink um, and pick fish up off the bottom. Awesome. On this one, I'm going to have you stand in the middle of the river where you have space to throw your back cast okay. and land it in the run of water. Um, Am I going right off the side or right into the riffle? About 10 feet in front of us, just at the back of this pool. And okay. you're casting right off to the left of the stump at the end of the stick that breaches off there. Okay. So that it ends or it runs right through the back of the pocket in the deep water. Oh, I forget how it's so different casting this rod. Positioning is going to be super important because all the trees in your back cast, you may want to take 10 steps forward. Okay. Austin gave me a few tips for fishing such a tight stream. Mending is super tough to do properly when you're casting straight upstream. So getting like a quartering up angle makes it a lot easier sometimes. Okay. Um, and then it just involves lifting your rod tip up to the point where like you're ready when as soon as you... Oh. as such. That's so cool. These cutthroat are so wild and squirmy. This water is really cold and they're super, super healthy. So this one here is a little tough. Our shadow's busting, shining right at the pool we want to fish. The water is going to push your fly behind a stump, which will make it hard to retrieve. There's okay. potential for a snag, but great structure for a fish. You're going to want to stand right here. Use this space to cast and land it at the start of the running water okay. so that it drifts back. Okay, I see. Um, and mending this one, it'll sort of tight your line itself, but you're obviously going to want to have keep, that rod, keep the rod right, right up. away. Okay. Right away. Awesome, let's uh, see if I can do this. <laughs> Watch for that uh, foam thing to change sudden direction too. Okay. Another cue to set the hook for sure. There you go. But I was doing that like correctly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've got a snag. Just that rock on the shoreline. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Nice cast. Did the nymph catch on something maybe? Uh, yeah. Deeper than that? That's about it. They, uh, with their vision, if, if it's in the pool with them, generally they should be able to see. Oh. I did it. Amazing. Woo. <laughs> oh man, that was, you were right. It was just right in that, wow. Right in that little pocket. Yeah. Okay, wow. So what's the best way to take the hook out? Does it just pop out typically? Um, it should. You may have to grab the fish as well. Let's see. Here, buddy. There's the hook. There we go. Just a beautiful baby brown. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Man, that is... That's awesome. That was kind of my first official fish of the day. And it's so much fun just watching them come up. And he came up on the hopper on that one, man. 
Man, this is awesome. Okay, let's go. Nicely done. Thank you. That could be a nice drift. I'll get it a little deeper next. If you can get it back to the shade and really pull it out from there. Okay. Right? Nice. You're on. Whee! Nice. Oh, no, I'm off. So did I just not set the hook enough that time? Mm -hmm. So like a harder. Yeah, once you see it in their mouth, you you lightly pulled up a little bit. You need a little bit more of a set. OK, so and that's a that sun. shot now, is it? Or another cast worth it? Uh, there's enough water there to hold multiple fish. So maybe his friends want to play. OK. Did it. Got him. Yeah. Looks like the first Yellowstone cut through. Amazing. Thank you. All right. Sweet. What my hands. So is it just uh, kind of under the belly? Yeah, they're so squirmy. One hand strong and then one hand on the lure or the fly. fly. Okay. Oh, they are squirmy. Okay. Should get this pop out. Yep. There it is. And oh man. That is, that's gorgeous. After a few hours on this part of the river, Austin suggested we try fishing another section lower down. As always, it's important to be aware of your surroundings when in the outdoors and to know what to do should you have a run-in with a wild animal. Get Moose! Despite all of my angling experience, fishing tight spaces on tiny streams like this was a whole new ball game for me. Even with Austin's excellent instruction and great tips, Things didn't always go as planned. Do you see it? Like, there's no way I could get it out, eh? No, it's hooked. The hopper's hooked right here. This type of fly fishing requires precision, practice, and lots of patience. Someone else broke their line off right here, too, you see? Oh, Ugh, fudge. Okay, no, that's it. We're done. When fishing a dry dropper, you have to watch your fly at all times. It just happened quick as can be. Yep. Oh, man. That was a nice bite, too. That was a nice bite. We're going to try and get him again. Okay. But... Thankfully, with Austin's guidance, nice cast. Wow. I was able to get into some great trout. Yes. Yeah. Came right out from under the embankment like you, uh, like you said it was going to. That the take is just awesome. Fish and chubbies is so fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're kind of good. You see where the ripples? They're, uh, we should see it again here shortly. Oh, you see that fish? Yeah. So landing it, you definitely don't want to land this line on them. So it's that fine part of landing, you know, your fly like five feet. Back. Okay. Oh yeah, wow. They're really just rising there. Yeah. One's coming. Oh, oh, oh. Come oh. On. oh. He knows. Oh, you might have one. 
You see how that motion yeah. really stirred them up? That's what I was talking about earlier. Nice. Woo! Oh, there's so many! Wow! Wow, there's so many there. This looks like your best one yet. Oh, oh. That's what I'm talking about. I cannot believe it's so clear and we can see fish just darting around everywhere. Holy smokes, they're following this guy. Let's bring him up here. Whoa. What a nice one. Wow, that is a, wow. Not far enough out. Try sending one to the back of it. In the, yeah. Like that? Yep. Fish. Nicely done. Nice. And you took the nymph. I saw that one. I was not letting that one go. Oh, you said yes. You said away from the sticks. There we go, buddy. And woof, yes. More to the right? Yeah, but there. Oh. I missed it? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> nice. Got it. Yes. Oh, wow. This feels like a... Better fish? A better fish. Let's go. Looks yeah. like it. It's a beauty. Might be. Oh, might be Take him easy. Fish. Yeah, let him, let him burn himself a little bit. There we go, buddy. Okay, and I'll bring him right up here for you, and... Oh, that is a better fish. Holy smokes! We're getting better. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Okay, let me see here. Man, oh man. Okay, I'll wet my hands first. I saw one moving in there. There you go. Nice. Oh! oh. Nice fish. Oh, wow. Super he nice fish. He hammered that, that chubby Holy Chernobyl. <laughs> wow. That is a nice one. Okay. Nope. Yeah, he wants to go back in his home. Sorry, buddy. We'll uh, we'll bring you back soon. Wow, that is Getting just bigger. wow. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So the uh, the what what was the fly? What did it's you? It's a brown chubby Chernobyl. Okay, and it just it came right out, and the net like na nailed that fly, and I just this is a. Gorgeous cutthroat, holy smokes. Buddy, wow, that is just, that's what you come here for, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking for all day. Awesome. Best one yet. Wow. Right back into the <laughs> right bank. Right back yeah. under the bank. That's awesome, thanks Austin. Yeah. Man. With such a great first day of learning on the river under my belt, 
I could heartily wait for tomorrow. One of the great things about a trip like this is the opportunity to explore the area and all it has to offer. Wind River Country is located in the heart of Wyoming, in some of the prettiest countryside in the American West. It's nearly 13,000 square miles of wondrous landscapes, dotted with small and welcoming towns. The ultimate destination for those wanting to relax, de-stress, and enjoy the relative solitude and tranquility Wind River offers visitors. From hiking to hunting, this region has it all. For anglers, the myriad of opportunities from small streams to large rivers offers bountiful choices for trout fishing which is why I already plan on coming back next year. For the remainder of my trip, I'm fortunate enough to be hosted and guided by Greg Fischel, owner and operator of the C&E Hunt Club. The C&E Hunt Club is our family ranch that we've had and been blessed with for over 60 years. And now it's my oldest brother, Jeff, and I and we would like to keep it in the family. We have two brand new cabins and then a well house that has a laundry facility. The cabins are um, duplexes. They're fully furnished, uh, full appliances. Um, everything's ready to go. It's a turnkey deal. Um, they're on our ranch. They're fed by pure artesian spring water fed ponds. With the hunt club, we, uh, promote the fishing in the spring and the summer. This is mostly public fishing and that is a beautiful thing. It's all of the rivers in the streams. You can do what we're doing in the high arid desert. You can go to the mountains and have rivers and creeks and lakes. It's a smorgasbord of public fishing is how I put it. It's incredible what we have here with public lands. For our first day of fishing together, Greg took me to one of his favorite spots in the Wind River region. Despite the low water levels the area had been experiencing this year, Greg was positive we'd be able to get into some active fish. We geared up and began our hike to the river. When water levels are this low, not only is it more difficult to locate active fish, but you have to keep in mind, they will be very easily spooked. Well, there you go. Little guy. There we go. Little guy. Woo! But we want to keep him in the wall. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Right here. Oh, look at this little guy. Let's get this fly out. Damn, we'll there you go, guy. We'll go catch his dad. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Which one were they after? Oh, there I you have go. A fish. Nice fish. Good for you. Just yeah. keep that tip tight. Perfect. Good job. Thank you.
Got him. Woo. Okay, so we're using a hopper dropper. And he took the hopper. And I'm just, I wet my hands first. You want to keep the slime on him. Protect them. I'll just pop this out. There we go. Oh, man, this is a beautiful fish. Oh, this, this, uh, oh, this is a nice fish. Bring him right up over to you here, if I can. Um, he's right here, let me see. And, oh, head in, head in, head in. There we go. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, man. Good job. These cutthroat are just gorgeous. And one thing that I wasn't pre prepared for was how orange their gills are. The gill plate is, wow, oh man. I'm going to, let's see if I can show you this fish here. Oh wow, just beautiful. Whoa. On day three, we headed back to the location we fished yesterday. Today, however, we're joined by a special guest. Greg and I invited Helen Wilson to join us on the water. Nice. Okay. This is a really nice deep pocket and I missed the hook set on that first fish because there's a bit of glare and I couldn't see my fly. Got him? Oh, okay. So I just handed Helen my, uh, my rod because the fly popped right out. We pinched the barb on that one. And this is a gorgeous Yellowstone cutthroat. First uh, fish of our day. Wow, I just, I can never get over the color of these fish. With just a few months of fly fishing under her belt, Helen has already caught the fishing bug. Greg was able to provide her with a bit of a review of the basics as well as some more specific instruction. Okay, all it is, it's, pretend you have a book right here and you're holding your magazine. Okay, it's not the common mistake for every new beginner, fly fisher, me included, is you break your wrist. It's not in your wrist, it's right in this forearm. So it's, it's this motion. Pause. And see, I barely break my wrist. It's all with this part. It's not this. It's not flipping your wrist. And the more you have it down, the more it loads the line. And so easier to back cast, pause, go forward. So it's just straight back to 12 o'clock down to about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Boom, boom. And you don't need to do a lot of casts. Good job. Good, good, good. Good. Meanwhile, I was off downstream having my own fishing fun. Fish. Yes. Nice. Oh, this is a nice cutthroat. Oh yeah. Oh, 
Oh, this might be a rainbow, actually. Hard to tell. No, that's a cut rope. Nice. Oh, yeah, beautiful cutthroat. Oh, okay. Awesome. That was a nice take. I'm going to let him sit in the water here for a second. I'm going to pop off my glasses. I don't have a trochees on them to stop them from falling in the water and I'm just going to wet my hands. So I keep that beautiful protected coating on the fish. Oh, look at that. My fly popped right out. That perk of the barbless hook. And I am going to see about, oh man, this is a nice cutty. Whoo. This is so much fun. And I love how active these fish are. Wow. Just, <laughs> just beautiful. Now let's get this little guy back to his buddies. And oh, he's eager to go. Wow, man. It just doesn't get better than this. I'm having such a good time. I was able to chat with Helen about all the wonderful things the Wind River region has to offer. So Fremont County is very large. It's larger than quite a few states on the East Coast. And um, what I really like about Fremont County is how diverse each of the communities are for both outdoor recreation um, and for the towns. So we have these small towns with quite a bit of space between them. Um, lots of room to roam, as we say. And, you know, you can go from one place where it can be wide open and you've got big open skies to another place with lots of trees and you can go 5,000 feet, 10,000 feet, some at a couple of peaks, find these gorgeous um, hidden rivers, hidden streams. We have reservoirs, we have lakes. Um, it's really a great place for, um, for the outdoors and for just being out there in nature. The fishing was tough today, and even though Helen wasn't able to get into any fish, I know she'll be back on the water very soon. With one more day ahead of me, I could hardly wait to see what tomorrow had in store. For my final day of fishing here in Wind River, Greg suggested that we head out to another river located a few hours drive from the CNE Ranch. This river is nestled between two towering peaks, the most picturesque location for my last day. While we'd been pretty lucky with the weather this week, the forecast had shifted overnight, and we now faced the threat of showers on and off throughout the day. However, I was not deterred. The potential of hooking into one last Wyoming trout was enough for me to brave almost any condition. Today, Greg and I are joined by new friend and Wind River Council representative, Melanie Huffley. Melanie is brand new to the sport of fly fishing, and I couldn't wait to spend the day with her on the water, teaching and learning with Greg. Despite the blustery conditions, there's nothing like spending time with new friends doing something you love. Lucky for us, after a damp start to the day, the weather cleared for the afternoon bite. Whoa, nice. I'm gonna keep tension on the line and I've had some tough fishing today. And uh, the water here has been really low. And uh, oh wow, this is oh, gorgeous cutthroat. Nice, okay, so I'm going to just get this, let this guy sit in the water here for a second. This is a brown. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous brown drone. Holy smokes, and just beautiful, beautiful spots.
Nice. Okay, we've got another fish. We have a beaver dam um, right here at the bottom. And I think this is uh, really good for where the fish are feeding because there's a lot of food getting stocked up there. Okay, buddy, let's see here. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. Fly popped right out. And I'm going to show you, man, the colors of these fish. I just, this is, this is a beautiful, beautiful trout. That was another beautiful fish here in Fremont County, Wyoming. I have had such an incredible time here. This is such a beautiful part of the U.S. and I feel so fortunate to have gotten to stay at Sini Hunt Club and visit all of these amazing fishing spots. If you'd like to learn more about fishing here in Fremont County or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Wind River Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,